Hi everyone, it's Mike with the Astro Explorers here, and tonight I'm here to talk to you about how to hook up your DSLR to your Celestron 8SC. Now there's a couple things that we're going to have to do, and there are a couple parts that you'll need. Uh, one of course is your DSLR, so if you own one, great. If you don't, that's okay. As we go through this video series, I'll be offering some different options as well. So the cell phone in the previous video, DSLR, and then the dedicated Astro camera. So it'll be up to you to decide which way you want to go on your Astro photography journey. But if you do have a DSLR, it is a great way to get moving forward. So I'm going to give you a couple steps on how to connect it to your telescope. And I'll also provide some information on where you can get some of those parts as well. All right, so just uh, watch to the end of the video and I'll let you know what you need. All right, so the first two things you're gonna need is a T-ring and a T-ring adapter. Now the T-ring is what you'll attach to your DSLR camera. You unattach the lens on your camera and this will feed in. And then the T-ring adapter is what replaces the eyepiece on the back of your telescope. And the two will screw in together with this attaching to your telescope. And with these two pieces, which you'll be able to order online, and I'll have those items in the, or links in the description below, uh, you'll be able to attach your DSLR to your telescope. So I'll show you how those attach here in a moment. And uh, I've got another handy tip for all right, another thing you'll want to get is probably a power adapter for your DSLR. If you're out late shooting the stars, uh, different nebula and the like, galaxies, you're going to eat up a lot of that battery power that's on your camera. I know when I first started, I was just simply using the batteries that came with my camera, and I was going through two, three a night and still not getting what I wanted. Plus, changing out those batteries you're losing a lot of time and you have to keep track of what's going on so if you have a power adapter that can just simply attach to your camera plug in again that's why i like being a backyard us for a photographer i can just use an extension cord um, this will give you all the power that you need to keep your camera running all night long all right so to attach your t-ring to your dslr You'll need to, of course, remove the camera lens. A lot of times there will be a button here on the side. Simply push it down, twist, and it pops right off. It's good to have a uh, plastic bag, Ziploc bag that you can store these in. That way you're not getting a lot of dust in there. And then what you'll do is you'll take your T-ring and you'll just feed it in to your camera until you hear that click and now you'll have your camera set up to screw into the back of that T-ring adapter. Now you've got a couple options. You can do it now before you attach it to your telescope or you can do it afterwards. I'm gonna go ahead and do it now. I just simply find it a little bit easier to connect the two pieces together while it's not attached to the telescope. But when you're ready or you wanna use your camera for something else, again, you just push that button, twist, and it comes right out. So for the Canon, you simply slide it in, turn it clockwise, it locks into place, and now that's not going anywhere, and we'll be able to attach our T-ring adapter to our camera and then attach it to our telescope. Okay, so like I said, I like to attach the T-ring to the camera before attaching the adapter to the back of the telescope. I just think it's a little easier uh, to line the threads up so all you're going to do is feed it in to those threads and twist you have this ring here which is what's going to actually attach to the back of the telescope it can get in the way sometimes there we go it can get in the way sometimes so just be a little careful with that and you can see how it can just be a little difficult to manage it all All right, so you take that T adapter, you feed it in, you still have this 
part right here that's going to actually screw into the back but what you'll do is we've got it started on the threading we just thread it all the way in until it doesn't go any further because last thing we want is our camera slipping or it falling down but now it's in place we can hold the camera by the t-ring adapter and the next thing we want to do is go ahead and remove the eyepiece from the back of our telescope I went ahead and just used the eyepiece earlier to do my three-point alignment right now we're looking at the Orion Nebula so hopefully once we get the camera in we'll be able to get a picture after we focus it all right you'll probably notice I threw on a dew heater or dew shield it's actually a dew shield with a dew heater uh, it's a bit cold out here I don't know if you can see my breath or not uh, but we were starting to get some dew on the front of the telescope and I wasn't able to see through here anymore so cleaned it off threw the dew shield on hopefully that'll take care of the issues and we can get an image tonight. I don't have it hooked up to the heater as that's in the observatory, but we'll see what we can do. But on that end, what you're gonna do is, we've got our eyepiece here that I use to align the telescope. You can do it with the camera on, but I wanted to just have this ready to go when I start filming. And you're going to take off the Celestron visual back. So we just unscrew it. So just like how it has the uh, catch here, that's what the T-ring does. So for the T-ring, we've got the same thing and we are going to simply screw it onto the back of the telescope where that visual back went. So then our camera is now going to act like that new eyepiece. And one of the things you can do is, since you can loosen it, you can rotate your camera how you like. So if you have a target that sits a little bit better, framed a little bit better, you can loosen this, rotate your camera, tighten it back in, and you can frame that way. Um, also, if you have your strap, I like to wrap it up here around the red dot site. That way, if for any reason at all, something let go which has never happened yet although if I've removed it I have dropped it but luckily it was hanging up here and gets caught by your red dot sight and that way you're not dropping your camera all right that car is gone so uh, as I was saying focusing can take a little bit of time there are some tricks I'm going to show you those later uh, one of those is using a Fatima mask and you just sit that right in front of the telescope and it'll create a design that allows you to line up. Uh, but you'll want to do that without your dew shield, although you can do it with the dew shield. Um, and you want to take your camera into live view. That way you can adjust. The other thing is you want a good stable platform while you're focusing. Uh, right now with me on the deck, it's shaking quite a bit as I try to focus, but I'll get it focused as well as I can just so I can get some images and then I'm going to do just a couple simple images uh, from the camera at a couple seconds we'll do a one second we'll do a five second and we'll try to go up to 30 seconds which is about the limit of what you can expect on a unguided Celestron Nexstar 8SE so I'm going to focus this get a couple images and I'll let you see what I get all right so went ahead took several different pictures here uh, started at one second three second five second I think I did 10 13 20 and then 30 uh, 30 is the longest I can do without going through software uh, plugging into a laptop things along those lines just on my old Canon T2i and yes it is a old Canon T2i that I'm using so I'm going to share these images with you uh, let you see what you think of them. Uh, they'll be quite a bit better than the cell phone ones that I showed you in the previous video. Uh, so 
These aren't stacked, they're just straight from the camera. So getting into stacked images is gonna be something we do in the future, but I'm gonna show you these images and we'll talk about those here for a minute. All right, so here's the first image. It's six seconds long. Uh, like I said, these are not stacked and you can see the little bit of the outline of the Orion Nebula. Um, the stars aren't perfect. Again, this was just on my deck. So any movement that I had is giving us a little bit of wiggle, uh, but you can actually see the outline of Orion and it's pretty good. I mean, this is better than what you would be seeing if you were just looking out your eyepiece. The second image is 20 seconds long. I know I did some different image links. Unfortunately, they did not all come out, but here you can really start to see Orion popping out. Uh, the stars, however, are starting to get much bigger and blown out, and that's because we're doing that longer exposure length. And one of the benefits of doing the stacked images at a lower exposure length is your stars don't get as blown out. So you still get the nice exposure length on the nebula without blowing out your stars. And here, when we look at the next image at 30 seconds, Again, Orion's really starting to pop. If I was stacking this, I'd really pick something probably between 12 and 15 seconds for exposure time. Take maybe 30 minutes to an hour of that. I would get a really nice image. But these are just three different images, all single frames, not stacked. But this shows you the capability of what you can do with your DSLR attached to your telescope and not using just your cell phone held up to it or with a holder. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you learned a lot about being able to connect your DSLR to your telescope. In the next video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually bring out the laptop. I'm gonna hook up the camera to the laptop and show you how you can use your laptop along with your camera to set up a stack, have it shoot automatically. That way you're not having to just stand here push the button each time it'll give you a lot more control and it'll build you up for the next steps so if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe leave a comment if you have any questions or tips and tricks for everyone else and again everyone i really appreciate you watching these videos have a great night and clear skies